in the house of the Lord. If there is any place I would recommend you to be, is here tonight. Because we're going to have a great word from the Lord. And above that, we will declare this year, we've got God have given us a new, I believe this year we call it a year of what? Our inheritance. And I don't know if you will witness inheritance, but I inherited something. I'm not where I used to be. My level changed. I don't know about you. Say to somebody, my level have changed. And I tell you, it's a great year absolutely for me. I don't know about you. It was a great year. And it's also a great year for this church because we've seen God do a lot of things in this church, even beyond the four words of this church. So this new year, we'll be declaring it tonight. We're starting by now, meaning but we just, you know, sing the song, sing song, go into the world, then take the word and pray all through by three o'clock. We declare the year, a law, we, and we will have time to love you more and hug you more. And then, and then we will say bye to everybody. So please, we want to encourage you to be here tonight. Amen. So please be here tonight. Okay, let's quickly stand up. And can we have the children to the children? What an awesome God. What a mighty God we serve. Every knee will bow before Him.
Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let's just thank you and say, Father, we decree and we declare that every tongue in this nation, every tongue in Manuco, every tongue in Auckland, we bow this year. In the name of Jesus, nothing will be able to withstand you, nothing will be able to stop you, nothing will steal our blessing. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, take authority. We bind any tongue that will oppose the glory of God, that will oppose the power of God, that will oppose the, the grace of God in our life. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we bind every kind of tongue. Lord, we bind every tongue. We rebuke every tongue demonic, spiritual, physical, wherever they are, they will rise against our glory, rise against our blessing, rise against our honor. We shatter those tongues in the name of Jesus. Spirit of Jehovah, thank you for hovering over this place. Thank you for opening the heaven and releasing your reign of blessing. Lord, we declare this day we walk in the blessing of the Lord. We walk in the glory of God. We walk in your anointing, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, as we prepare to enter the new year, we declare our safe unstoppable. In the mighty name of Jesus, no demon will stand our spirit. No power will stand our glory. The glory of this later house shall be greater than the former. Lord, we take authority right now. We subdue every spirit 200 kilometers away from here we bind them in the name of jesus Amen. and we release fire in the air fire in the land fire in the sea fire in the bush lord let this nation cut fire for jesus in the name of jesus electrify this atmosphere lord electrify our soul lord deposit something new in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, the King of King and the Lord of Lords. Thank you for elevate Lord. Thank you for what you're about to do in this time and season. Even before we live here today, you will do something new. You will do something new. Father, you will do something new in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for opening the heaven already. I can feel the rain, Lord, from the third room of God, from the third heaven, Lord, from your throne room. I thank you for the rain of glory. I tap into this rain. I tap into this glory. I tap into this fire. Thank you, Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody shout. Amen. Thank you, Elevate. God bless you. Put your hand together for Elevate. God bless you. Um, please, um, last week we started on a topic titled, Grace has done this. Say, Grace has done this. When you look at today, it is called the last Sunday of the year. After all that you went through, Galatians 1, 5, 15, after all that you've been through, Hello. After all the storms, you went through fire and through mountain. David said in Book of Psalm, Psalm 66, verse 12, he said, Lord, I've gone through fire. He said, I've gone through mountain. He said, but at the end, oh Lord, you have brought me to my worthy place. Every one of you, you can attest to this. I don't know how free this has been to you. In spite of all the good things God has done, you probably went through fire. But I, I love the fire that is sent by the Holy Ghost. Because Holy Ghost fire have a way of you know, purifying you and consuming anything that is not of him, removing every impurities, and make you ready for greater mighty things God is doing or is about to do. If you've ever been through fire this year, I guess your fire is not, was not meant to burn you. It has nothing to do with destroying you, but it has everything to do with molding you and making you into the man or the woman God wanted to be. And thank God for his grace that has always been there. I told our wife, that my wife, that went, it's actually our wife because she's serving the church. 
that what we've been through since we started with this ministry, that if we haven't gone through it at its inception, we can't stand it now. That sometimes God allows you to go through stuff when you're beginning your journey of life in order to make you strong. Because he knows there are many Goliaths and there are many giants. So we want to thank God for this grace. Look at yourself today. It's not because of your, um, your goodness or your righteousness. You are sitting here today because his grace says so. And this, um, this week, I was thinking of, um, about the grace of God. And I said, Lord, the greatest world, the greatest world that is greater than the diamond of uh, South Africa, diamond field of South Africa, or gold mine of South Africa, you have diamond of gold. I said the greatest thing, the greatest is his love, his grace, his mercy, his word, his name. As I was thinking this, I said, if I have the name of Jesus, I have the word of Jesus, I have the grace of Jesus, I have the mercy of Jesus, and I have the love of Jesus, I have the greatest in you know, a diamond faith or good faith. So whatever you do, ask the grace to speak for you. Once you have the grace, you have it all. If you look in Galatians 1 5, it says, To whom be the glory? Is it Galatians 1 verse 5, 15? Sorry, 1 15. There is nothing you become as a believer that grace did not play a key role. Just as a fish cannot live without water, you cannot have, you know, you, you cannot have success without grace. Everyone you see on earth, everyone today, every believer, it's a byproduct of the grace. You were not made because of your smartness. Paul said, by, but when God, who from my mother's womb, set me apart and called me by his grace, amen, and called me by his grace, was pleased. Hello, somebody. Here, Paul, you know, Paul made it clear that he was not called because he was a lawyer. Hello, somebody. You're not sitting here today because of your education. He said, God, you know, chose me. He set me apart and called me by his grace. Some of you that is sitting here today, in spite of all that you've been through, God set you apart. You've been through hell. You've been through fire. You've been through the mountain. But at the end of the day, you are set apart by God to do something greater than you. Hello, somebody. I hope I'm preaching to the right congregation. I don't know whether to go there or here. Who do I speak to right now? <laughs> praise God. Praise God. <laughs> amen. 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 Okay, it's, it's balanced. It's balanced right now. So in spite of who you are, the thing that sets you apart is the grace of God. I could not imagine any other message to conclude the year with apart from the message of grace. Why are you sitting here this morning? Many of us miss, you know, we would have died this year by accident or through accident. We had a lot of testimonies in this church this year. People almost died by accident. But God protected everyone. When I look at this church since we started over eight years ago, we've never, we've never had to come here to bury anybody. Only that is the grace of God. Let me tell you, there are churches that bury people almost every month. Hello, somebody. Almost every morning, they are mourning. But it's not because of our righteousness or because of anything we are. It's just because the mercies and the grace of God find us. Say to somebody, his grace has found you. That's what Paul said. If you look at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, written from 10, we, we saw it last week. Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. First, First Corinthians 15, 1, 15, verse 10. I am what I am by the grace of God. Are you what you are today because of your smartness? Hello, somebody. Because you look beautiful or because you're handsome? Hello, somebody. You are what you are today because his grace chose to keep you going. Many of our men Many of our loved ones have gone. And if you look at them, some of them, we are, they love God. And there are things we can't even answer. There are questions we can't answer. You keep wondering, why must people that love God die the way they did? They did. You love God too, and you're alive. 
They love God, but they have gone. Sometimes we tend to make it look like those who love God, nothing bad ever happened to them. Once in a while, we don't know why it happened. Even people that love God, they love, still face challenges. But if you've gone through your, through your challenges, gone through your water and through your fire, yet you see yourself in the land of the living, today is the 31st day of um, 2017. You could have committed suicide January this year. You could have taken your life. You could have quit your job and stay at home. But you choose to keep going. It's not even because you choose to keep going. It's because His grace has choose to keep you going. But by grace, I am what I am. And His grace toward me was not ineffective. I made use of it. Some of you here today, you have the grace of God, but you just don't know how to make use of your grace. No wonder your song is still in your stomach. You've not written your song. You've not write your book. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Because you don't know how to make use of your grace. Some of you have a deposit of grace. You are a grace carrier. Your life is about grace. And if you can, if you learn how to release your grace, your life will never remain the same again. But by grace, I am what I am. Are you what you are by your degree? You have two PhD and two, three master's degree? Not at all. Are you what you are by your good-looking husband or beautiful wife? Not at all. Are you what you are because you have money? Not at all. Hello, somebody. You are what you are by his word, grace. Say to somebody, I am a product of the grace of God. Oh, 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 oh. So I want you to know that God's grace is what has made us all. But I want to quickly show you something very important. And it was last night when my wife, my wife was talking to me, I realized why I wanted to use that scripture. It would have been my first scripture. Zechariah chapter 4, reading from five to six or six to seven I was thinking Lord why do I want to use this scripture at my opening scripture Zechariah 5 4 6 to 7 the Bible says don't you know don't you know that they are don't you know what they are replied the angel who was speaking with me I said no my Lord keep going reduce the base of this keep going uh, the, so he answered me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by strength or by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Now, Zerubbabel was building, I'm going to get to my main scripture, here, the next verse is going to be my main scripture. Zerubbabel was building, while he was building, I want the best reduce, please. While he was building, and there was all sort of an opposition. People were trying to stop them from building the house of the Lord. And God sent his prophet to tell them that what they are building is not actually by their own power. Hello, somebody. He says, so he answered me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by strength or by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And I was thinking, what is it that God called his spirit? That, we, that was building for them. And the Holy Ghost said, the Spirit is actually His grace. Hello, somebody. He said, look, you are not building these by your power. He said, but my grace will build it. But then there's a scripture I saw today. I think it may excite you. Um, I want you to be excited all by yourself. Don't wait me to excite you. Look at that scripture. It says, what are you, great mountain, before prince? Say, you will become a plain, meaning a leveled mountain. It says, and he will bring out the capstone accompanying by shards of what? Grace, grace to it. In this verse of the scripture, Zerubbabel was building. And there was all sort of enemy trying to pose him. And God says, I'm going to send my spirit to build for you. He said, by the time you, you put the last block... Hello, somebody. 
Some of you here are about to complete what you've been building in your life. He said, by the time you put the last block, Zerubbabel, so I want you to proclaim one thing. Use one word. Keep shouting, grace, grace. Somebody's not even excited. He said, keep shouting, grace, Zerubbabel. When you finish putting the last block, the last capstone, he said, <coughs> I read it again. Uh, let me, from the B. And, and here we bring out the last capstone. <coughs> And here we and he we bring out the capstone accompanied by shards of grace, grace to it. Now some of you here, we don't know how to celebrate God when we are coming to conclusion of what God is doing in our life. Anytime God has given us the car, given us the job, our children all graduated, educated. We don't know how to say, Lord, this is about your grace. I keep telling some of you, I don't know how to say, sometimes I, li I don't like to use the word, I am proud of my children. Proud of what? I use the word, I am delighted. So, oftentimes, when God has done what we've been asking him to do, we have the tendency of taking the glory and not recognize the place of the grace. This is the end of the year. Today is the end of the year. Hello, somebody. What are we supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be shouting grace, grace, grace. Can we say grace, grace, grace? The reason you are here today is not because of you are, you, you got it all together. You have the tenacity need, needed. Not because of your tenacity. It's just because of your grace. All that God is asking you is to recognize the place of his grace in this journey of 2017. If we recognize the place of the grace, God will do it again for you. If you thank God for the former victory, he will win your future battles. And there are so many of us today, we don't know, we simply don't know how to thank God. We don't know how to rejoice, you know, and say, Lord, we thank you for what you did. You know, sometimes, I realize, sometimes, you know, I would pray and ask God to do great things, but after doing it, I would just relax. Hello, somebody, I would just relax. Instead of me coming back to the altar, and I've learned that, to come back to the altar and say, Lord, thank you. You made this happen. It's not about, about me. It's not about my power. It's not about my righteousness. But you made it happen. In the last years I've been preaching, I've never seen anybody God open their eyes. It's just this year. I've seen other miracles, but I've never seen somebody walk when I pray for them. I've never seen somebody, their eyes open. But I saw it this year. And I know that that is what Christ. Hello, somebody. I so, so that doesn't may, make me feel that I'm powerful, not at all. It's just the mercies of God. We in Fiji, we, we were there, a woman of 30 years, sitting on the wheelchair for 30 years. And God pulled her out of her wheelchair for the first time in 30 years. Now, I should not go home and think that because I am powerful. It could be God have seen the tears of that family. Even the husband had a, one ear wasn't working and God opened his ears also. God did not only heal the wife that was in a wheelchair for 30 years, but God also gave them some bonus by opening his ears. When God does one, he does all. When he bless your neighbor, he bless you. Hello, somebody. That's one of the reasons I must rejoice for the blessing of my neighbor. If you don't know how to rejoice for your neighbor, you got some problem. Hello, somebody. When your neighbor is blessed, learn to rejoice with them. Because when you rejoice with them, God will do for, your ne for you what he has done for your neighbor. But if you keep on saying, why not me, Lord? God will not remember you. Am I talking to somebody? But one thing I realize, anytime God steps into your situation, anytime God remembers you, when we say God remember you, it doesn't mean that God forgot you in the past. God has never forgotten any of your children. You don't forget your children. 
But there is a time we call it time or a season. We call it kairos time, kairotic moment. Kairotic, kairotic moment is a time of visitation. When God decides to say, this year is your year and nobody can take it from you. I don't care what you've been through. Even at the 11th hour, God can give you a call through somebody that will change your life. You may be saying, well, this year is coming to an end, Lord. Nothing just happened for me. But I came to announce to somebody that it's not yet over till it is over. In the name of Jesus, just one drop of God's fire, one drop of God's anointing, one drop of God's glory will shift something in your life. In the name of Jesus. But we've got to recognize the place of grace. I, this year I saw all sort of miracle, and I wasn't struggling to see it happen. Hello, somebody. Sometimes I just pray, and people started to testify of their healing. Hello, somebody. Somebody called me, Pastor, Pastor Lone called me the other day. He said, there's a woman who prayed that had a boil in the stomach. He said, she couldn't walk, she couldn't do anything. He said, but now she can walk, she can go to the farm, she can do everything that she was healed. I didn't even know, I just prayed for her. Is what the work of grace. It's not because I am good. And some of you think you're looking good because you're good. You aren't good because you look good. You are good because God chose to make you good. Am I talking to somebody? You are alive today because of the grace of God. So now you have been able to, to, you know, to be here called 31st day of the year. You are about to cross over into something that is bigger and greater and powerful than you. All you've got to do is to start to recognize and say, God, I thank you for this year. I thank you. You kept me. You kept my family. You kept my children. I choose to bless your name. Say to somebody, bless his name. Keep blessing him. It doesn't matter. Maybe you didn't have all the money that you needed. Hello, somebody. You didn't get married this year. I came to declare to somebody that God has just prepared your husband somewhere at the tail end of the earth. Am I talking to somebody? There is a man for every woman and there is a woman for every man. Am I talking to somebody? You've got to understand that it's not yet over until God has done what he has promised you in the name of Jesus. But what are you supposed to do today? While you go home, keep shouting grace. Grace has done this. Grace put this food on my table. Grace give me this job. It is grace that made me to accomplish my education. It's not because I know too well I know something. Or because I know how to be smart. It's just the grace of God lay hold on me. There are some of you today. The grace of God is about to lay hold on you. You cannot atrone his grace in the name of Jesus. I said the grace is about to pursue you. His grace is about to pursue you in the name of Jesus. Would you not start saying, Lord, it's about your grace. Who am I to be used by God? Who am I to be called by God? Who am I to be alive today? I'm not alive because I got a good head. It's just because God he deposited his grace to live. Am I talking to somebody? Some of you here right now, grace to live is on your life. You are not dying young. You are afraid of dying, but I came to announce to you, you will not die. It's your season to leave. The Lord says, I should let you know. It is your season to be alive. You may be saying, I've been alive, but I don't feel it. You will feel it this year. Because God is about to put abundance on your table. In the name of Jesus. It's like, Zerubbabel, when you finish this building, I need you to start shouting wanting. He said, don't just say it. He said, but shut it. Am I talking to somebody? You didn't hear that. He said, Zerubbabel, don't say it. He said, what should accompany the completion of what you're building is just one word. That word is called the word of grace, the word of power, the word of love, the word of glory. 
He says, Zerubbabel, if you keep using this wall, I will build another temple for you. Am I talking to somebody? That some of you right now, God has done so much for you. You don't see it just because you don't have the necessary money you need in your pocket. Money is not riches, but grace is riches. If you have the grace of God, you have the money you need. Am I talking to somebody? Once the grace is on your life, money is in your pocket. Oh, I say once grace is on your life, money is on your pocket. Is there anybody this morning that is looking for money, that is praying for money, that is asking God for a new job? Go for the grace. Once the grace is on you, there is job on your table. In the name of Jesus. Say that somebody live by his grace. Every day of your life, you must, you must identify with the grace of God. You must recognize the place of grace. Let me quickly show you something in, the, in Ezra. Please turn to Ezra. Get seated. Turn to Ezra. I'll show you something. Ezra chapter 4. Hola, Baba, chapter 3. I'm going to show 10 to 11. Ezra, chapter 3, 10 to 11, or even more to 12. I want to show you a scripture there. These guys were sent home to build the house of God because the temple was broken down. Hello, somebody. Because of the sins of the children of Israel, they were taken to Ezra, and God's temple was broken. So God sent them home just to rebuild the temple. That was God's intention for sending them home. You are alive today to build the temple of God. Now, what does God ask them to go and build the temple? But God did not say to them they shouldn't do business after building the temple. God never said to them they shouldn't get married after building the temple. But the Lord said, I'm sending you home from Babylon to go and build my temple. That was specific assignment given to them. So God's purpose in your life is your primary reason for living. You must always discover why you are alive. Once you don't know why you are alive, you will misplace your purpose on earth. Hello, somebody. So when they got home, they started building. Now look at what they did. Immediately they laid the foundation, the Bible says. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple, they have not finished the temple. Okay? Foundation of the temple of the Lord. They set the priest in their upper array with trumpets, what is, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph with cymbals, to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, the king of Israel. Hello, somebody. Is there anybody here? All they have done, remember, they were sent home to build the temple, but they managed to put the foundation, to lay the foundation, and they were still rejoicing. Oh, you didn't hear me, somebody. Immediately they laid the foundation. They, they asked priests to take their trumpets and the Levites, and they began to sing and praise God. Somebody should have said, why don't you wait until you finish building? But they did not wait. They said, Lord, if we can lay the foundation, hello, somebody, we can also finish the building. But there are some of us here who do not know how to thank God when we have not getting it all right, when it's not all right. You don't know how to thank God. When you look at yourself, you say, oh, how can I even thank God? What can I show for you? If you are alive today, you can show something. Hello, somebody, your life is a show. If you are alive, the devil could have removed your head two years ago. The devil could have cut off your fingers or your legs two years ago. But God kept you. It is the grace of God. So they begin to praise God and worship God for laying the foundation keep going. I want to show you more. You see, and they sang together, amen, by cause and praising and giving thanks unto the Lord. Because he is what? Good. For his mercies endured forever toward Israel, prince. And all, he, he's got to know that Israel is actually prince. Hello, somebody. He says, his mercies endured forever toward me. And all the people shouted with what? A great shout. Hello? When they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. You didn't catch it. He said, just the foundation was laid. 
and they were rejoicing and praising God. You got just one suit, one clothes, you aren't rejoicing because you don't have five. Hey, listen, somebody, you may not have five until you learn to rejoice in your foundational level. And they recognized the grace of God and they were happy and said, Lord, we didn't know we even come back home. How much more lay in a foundation that we carry your temple. Hello, somebody. And they were rejoicing. But I love what I saw here. The Bible says, and no, go, get back to it. The Bible says, in, I think in B, all people shouted with a great shout. There are some of you, you come to church, you don't like folks when they are shouting. You're too spiritual to shout. Hello, somebody. Even in the Old Testament, we saw folks shouting with a great shout. That is why if you don't sit, if you're sitting close to neighbor that doesn't know how to shit, you've got to move your chair to a neighbor who can make you feel what heaven is feeling about you. Hello, somebody. The Bible said they shouted with what? A great shout. Oh, and when they praised the Lord, and when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. You look somebody, you look at your empty bank account, and the you say hallelujah. And the year 2018 is going to be full. Halabasha kabayaga. You say it's going to be full. Am I talking to somebody? You learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. So that somebody encourage yourself in the Lord. Because it's going to be better. Am I talking to somebody? I am prophesying right now. I don't need to call your name. But the Lord is saying to somebody, it is going to be good. Oh, 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 oh. And they, you've got to come to the point where you don't have a pastor, you don't have a, a preacher, you don't have an elder in the church. Come to the place where you learn to praise God. I, I wonder, I, was in, which I saw something on the internet. This lady came down from the traffic. There was a traffic light, still red light. She opened her door. She came out. She danced, break dance in the Lord. She danced, 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 danced. And she jumped into her car. Oh, see what the Lord have done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm holding myself. Hallelujah. Oh, you don't know how to dance that song? <laughs> Hello, somebody. Come to a place where you look at yourself. You may not have food on your table, but you can still see what the Lord has done. Am I talking to somebody? Said you never look at me now. 2018 is going to be a different year in my life in the name of Jesus. Why the foundation? It was still on the building was still in east or on its foundational, its foundational level. They we have praising God. You waiting to have a new husband before you can praise God. Don't pray for new one. Thank God for your old one. Am I talking to somebody? God will turn him into something better and good. In the name of Jesus. Or keep going. But there, there were religious people there. Watch this. Watch this. But many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers, who were ancient men, old prophets, that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice and many shouted in a loud for joy. Keep going. Keep going. So, so that the people could not design the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a shout, with a loud shout, and the noise was heard afar off. This is the place to shout. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Shouting is actually a prophetic thing. When you shout, don't shout because folks are shouting. Shout because you caught, you caught the revelation. Revelation are not learned, they are caught. So, this guy shouted, but there were old prophets who were crying. Do you know why they were crying? They said, we saw the old building. It was large. It was fantastic. It was marvelous. It was greater than, what we, than the new foundation we have laid. They were crying and said, this is not enough. Hello, somebody. I, I'm afraid of old prophets. Hello, somebody. Some of you that have been in the church for the last 30 years, I, I'm a little bit afraid of you right now. Because sometimes you're not, you're unmoving. 
The first day I went to the church, I heard the man wasn't preaching crazy. He was just teaching the scripture. I started crying. My body was shaking because I haven't heard that before. The people that have been in church for too long, they don't know how to rejoice because they think we've heard a sort of sermon before. You may have heard it before, but the spirit is not the same. Hello, somebody. And those men, we are crying and saying, the old building was better. Some of you like to get, you know, you, you are stuck with old stuff. You, you don't want to make some change. Hello, somebody. But they will say, no, it's too good. This is too small. But the man who never saw something before, who did not know how the old building used to look like, we are satisfied with the new building. One of the reasons you cannot please people that are used to receiving stuff from you, if you've given them $20,000 last year and 15000 this year, and this Christmas you're giving them a dollar, they will not appreciate you because you used to give them $20,000. Most people that are used to receiving are not appreciative. Hello, somebody. They always want more. But this guy, the new guy, the young folks who was in the congregation, they said, look, we've never seen even a foundation in our life. So they begin to shout. They did not allow folks who were crying to outweigh their joy. The Bible said, what well, shall we read again? So that the people could not desire the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping. Of the people, for the people shouted with a loud shout, and the noise was heard afar. The noise of your greatness in the year 2017 will be heard beyond the shores of New Zealand. In the name of Jesus, the noise of what God is getting ready to do will be known beyond your horizon because God is about to do something greater. Than what he has done in the days of your fathers. In the name of Jesus. I am prophesying to somebody right now. Jacob looked at his children. He said that my blessing is greater than the blessing of, of Abraham and blessing of Isaac. He said my blessing is more greater. He said but all this blessing I release it on you. Am I talking to somebody? You will experience the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Isaac. And the blessing of Jacob. In the name of Jesus. All you've got to do is to learn to rejoice. Say to never rejoice with me. Because my level has changed. I'm not playing, I'm prophesying. Say neighbor, rejoice with me. Today is a day of rejoicing. Oh, 2017, 31st of 2017. The good thing about this day is ending on Sunday. Sunday is a day of grace. Am I talking to somebody? While other people are in the bear pillow dying, you are in the house of God, walking in grace and receiving grace. Say to somebody, it's my grace day. In the name of Jesus. Why they are wasting away? I, I was telling them in Fiji the other day. I said, I cannot be the same with people in the street. How can my level be the same? There are some folks right now, while I'm talking to you, they are in the beer pillow. They aren't receiving any revelation whatsoever. How can I go to work from Monday morning and remain the same level? and complain for their little mindset. They didn't receive a word, no covering, no blood, no anointing. I should be the ruler in my workplace because I came to the church and received something that is greater than them. I have substance on the inside. So you can't go back and you're looking like this. <laughs> Lord, I didn't get it this year. I prayed it didn't work. God stored that prayer in his heavenly cup. Though you pray this year, it looked like it's not working. It will work next year. Because what is going to make your next year is the prayers you prayed this year. No man of God suddenly start working in the anointing. The anointing you walk in today is the prayers you prayed yesterday. If you continue to recognize grace, I'm telling you, there are some of you here today. I'm hearing reunification. I'm hearing unification. 
There are some of you today, God will unify you with things that will change your life. In the name of Jesus. All you've got to do is believe. Said you never believe. Learn to rejoice. Even when people are showing attitude, refuse to show attitude. That if they, they tell you, no, my, my child is sick, I lost my job, my car broke down. That is not the only news. Hello, somebody. Your car broke down, but you are still alive. Hello, somebody. You had a flat tire, you can still come down from your car, change your tire for 30 minutes, and continue your journey. For the fact that I have a flat tire today, doesn't mean it's a bad day. Some people are going to church rejoicing. They are saying, Lord, it's going to be a great day. Thank God I'm alive. On their way to church, they had a flat tire. And they conclude, they say, oh, this is a bad sign for next year. Hello, somebody. And if anything go wrong in their life next year, they will say, I sense it the day the tire broke down. <laughs> Just before I entered into the new year, I had a flat tire. And I was rejoicing to get the church. It's a sign that it's not going to be a new year. And they believe in things like that. You are so powerful. There is something about you. You can decide to declare, Lord, it is getting better. It's going to be better. I will not remain in my sickness, in poverty, in disgrace, in shame. I don't care what is covering you. Hello, somebody. I don't, there's anointing in this house. You've got to know and believe it. We're in Fiji. And this lady, she's the only one that come to church in their house. You were there with me. And she came. The father wasn't working properly. You know, had a swell and couldn't work properly. I was in the car. I was already going. She brought a piece of cloth. She said, man, go, please, can you put on this cloth? She's still a new believer. I prayed on the piece of cloth. She take it home and lay it on the father. And she said, the man said, because he came the next day you were there. He said, when the daughter laid that cloth on his leg, and he fed fire all over his leg, so he stood up and started walking like this. I stood up and started walking. I didn't go home. I just blow into the cloth. But you are under this atmosphere. The church is not a building. The church is an atmosphere. That is why we come to places like this. And after being in the presence of God, I cannot go home and respond to my challenges just like every other person in the street. It is not possible. There is God in this house. I'm a child of God. He is actually living in the inside of me. I carry God. In him we walk. In him we move. In him we have our being. Recognize the place of his love. Can I show you a few scriptures? Maybe one or two. Recognize the place of grace. The place of his blood. The place of the word of God. The place of his name. This five or six things is powerful. Hello, somebody. Think of the blood of Jesus. Think of the mercies of God. We answer King's Mercy Global Church. The mercy of God that I... That, that, that goes across the globe. Hello, somebody. There is nothing like the mercy of God. Mercy, even when you have seen what can keep you going, is His mercy. Hello, somebody. Anytime you pray a prayer of mercy, or you're saying, Father, I am, I am guilty already, a prayer of mercy is a prayer of self-indictment. You're saying, Lord, I am, I am not good. I know I offended you. I got it wrong. But please, Lord, show mercy. Hello, somebody. Some of you do not know how to pray a prayer of mercy. And you always think, I'm right. I'm good. I'm serving in the house of God. No, you aren't good. Nobody is good. We are good in his grace. It is his grace that makes us look beautiful. Have you ever seen people that look smart and great, and after three years you see them again, they, have, they are broken down, they are like a broken down wall? Oh, I don't know if I'm talking right now. <laughs> and you keep wondering, but I saw this lady or this man two years ago. You say, how come she looked broken? Joshua 24, 24, 11 to 13. How come she looked broken? I know your child, I will be closing soon. 
Hello, somebody. Say to your neighbor, don't sleep. I, I want to show you scripture that will save your life. Hello, somebody. I'll show you scripture that will save your life. There is life in the scripture. Hello, the picture of your future is in the scripture. If you can grab the scripture, you can grab life. Everything I know today, I did not learn it from the school. I have bachelor in theology, but I didn't learn it from the school. I learned it from the scripture. Hello, somebody. The scripture will set your life ablaze. You need the world. That's why when you live here today, say to yourself, I got the world in the inside. I will not fail. I got the world. I will not beg bread. Hello, somebody. Some of you, you want to have um, a steady salary to be able to rejoice for the future. I don't have a steady salary. Hello, somebody. You, oh, Lord, I want to have some. No, walk in his grace. You don't have food on the table today. doesn't mean you will not have food this year. You may be the one to feed half of Auckland 10 years from now. Hello, somebody. So your present situation must not negate your future destiny. Jesus was born in the manger. But did he end in the manger? Now he is what? At the right hand of the Father. Praying for you and me. And that is where you are going. So don't look at the situation. We come to the house of God to be encouraged. I want to show you a few scriptures and I will close. Please stay alive and alert. Hello somebody. I know you're tired but I promise you. Remember this is Pentecostal place. So we have a Pentecostal time. Hallelujah. All right, let's shall we read. The Bible says, And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which you bet not. Okay. And ye dwell in them of the vineyards and olive which ye planted, which you planted not, do ye eat. Okay, please go back to 11. To 11. This is what God is going to do for some of you. Hello, somebody. God will give you a city. You we are not part of. I'm telling you right now. You, what did, you then crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The people of Jericho as well as the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Gigeshites, Hivites, and Jebusites fought against you. Look at all that is fighting the people of God. Hello, somebody. Spiritually, these are the things actually we deal with. Amen. Look at the number. He said, the, all these highs and, and vice and ties, he said, they fought against you, but I handed them over to you, Prince. I don't know about you. Keep going. He said, they gathered and they fought, but I handed them over to you, God. Which, he said, what is, now how did he hand it over to them? He said, I send the honest ahead of you, what like this, and it drove out to Amorite king before you. It was not by your sword or bow. Hello, somebody. If you look at this scripture, you know that they fought. They actually fought. They fought. You know that they fought with Amorites. They fought with the Gigasites and the Hivites. They really fought. But here, God said, it wasn't because you fought that I handed you over, that nation over to you. He said, what, hand, what drove them away was honey. Hello. Hello, somebody. But if I throw, if you look at the Bible exegetically, you will not see where on it actually drove the kings of Amorites or Hivites away. The people actually engaged those nations in what in fight. But at the end of the day, God said, "Look, it wasn't because you, you know, had a bar or a javelin or whatever." He says, "My, it was my on it." And when I thought about it, I said, "Oh God, what is it that is on it that drove away these nations?" And the Lord showed me something in the book of Psalms 44, verse 3. <laughs> Psalm 44, verse 3. We may have even, please, I want to quickly show you that. You will see that some of the things you've done today, it was grace that did it. Please recognize the place of the grace. Shall we read? For they did not take the land by their sword. Their arm did not bring them victory, even though they used their hand to fight. But by your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you were pleased with them. Oh, 
church. There are people that are in this church this morning. The Lord says, I'm not going to do this thing for you because you have bar, you have javelin, you have strength. I'm going to do it for you because I love you. I am pleased with you. And some of you have won battles and wars and have victory over and over again. And when you look at yourself, you may, sometimes we do have the proclivity or the tendency to think that because of all our degree and our concert and connections, that is why we're able to scale through. You've not been scaling through because you have all these things. It's important we embrace this in our heart. God's people, please. You have not scared through because you are better than other people. Or because you serve God better than other people. There are people in Cambodia that are more faithful right now serving God. But they don't have a meal on their table. They don't have car. They're walking about uh, maybe about uh, 20 kilometers in their church. Yeah, they ain't got food on their table. And God said, you don't have all these things. Your marriage is not together because you, you are a better woman than your next neighbor. Oh, I, I, I don't know who I'm talking to. Hello? God decided to show you mercy and grace. Look at that scripture. For they did not take the land by their soul. Their arm did not bring them victory. But by, but by your right hand, your arm, the light of your face. For you were pleased with them. Some scriptures say, for you favor them. And some say, for you love them. So favor, grace, love are all the same. They are correlated. Some of you here, you are working in the favor of God. I'll show you something in Deuteronomy before I, Deuteronomy before I go. Deuteronomy chapter 4, 37 to 38. You are favored by God. That is why you've been able to do all that you've done. The reason you are alive today is His favor, His mercies, His grace. I can have Brother Zimel. Brother Zimel, come on, keep, keep, me, keep this thing going for me. You know, all these things you've been able to fulfill, please recognize. Even for you to be able to put on clothes this morning. <laughs> Hello? You put on clothes, and while you were putting on your pen, you didn't fall and die. Hello, somebody. It was his grace. I've heard of about, about two people in this country. They were taking shower in their bedroom. They collapsed and they died. How will a man know that while you're going to your bathroom to take shower and to look good, how will you even think you will die in the bathroom? In your own bathroom. So you went to the bathroom this morning. You came out. You should rejoice. It's not because of you. It's because of his grace. All your children are all alive. You don't have money, but you have your five children all alive. Give him the praise. You have a little pain in your stomach. That pain been there for the last 20 years. You prayed, the pain has not been lifted. But your husband is alive, your kiss is alive. Give God a praise. What you do not have today, what you have is greater than things you do not have. Hello, somebody. Everything you are is the work of his grace. I'm, I, I'm, I, I ought not to be standing here today because you are all the smartest folks. You are smarter than me. I'm holding this microphone not because I know better than you. It's because God chose to show me grace. That is why he said to him, to, to Zerubbabel, when you finish this building, I just want you to be saying one thing. He said, don't just say it. He said, cry it. Shout it. Grace, grace, grace. That is how to end the year. End with the recognition it is your grace, O oh Lord. I've not done anything to deserve my life. I've not done anything to deserve, to deserve my position. I've not done anything to deserve my children being alive. You just chose to show me grace. And then after you say that, you turn to God again and say, God, would you not show me another grace for the year 2018? 
if this is grace that we keep you this coming year, if we will recognize the gospel of grace, hello somebody, if you will recognize the place of grace this year, next year you will walk in the fullness of his grace. The Bible says, and Jesus Christ was full of grace and truth. Even Jesus needed grace to flow, to operate hello, in this art. If Jesus needed the fullness of his Father's grace to operate on earth, I need greater grace. Because while he was on earth, he was fully God and fully man. His man dimension was man and his spirit is God. But his man dimension needed the fullness of his grace to be able to accomplish anything. Even the Bible says, and he became strong and grow in grace. The Bible also says, look, look, please leave it there. In Luke chapter 2, verse 52, it says, Jesus Christ grew in stature, in, 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 in what? In stature, in wisdom, and in favor with God and man. That word favor is also grace, and in grace with God and man. We need this dimension. Recognize it. Hello, somebody. Once you do, your life will not, I mean, we not remain the same again. And one of the reasons I, I share the scripture, I'm done now. God allows you to live. He said, he said to Israel, because he loved your fathers. Because he loved your fathers. He chose their descendants after them and brought you out of Egypt by his presence and great power. Then the last verse. By his what? Presence and great power. It's not by their sword. By his presence. The other scripture said, he, because he was pleased with them. Another scripture said, because he favored them. Some scripture said, because he loved them. And in this scripture, say, we, I brought you out because I love your fathers. Some of you are alive because your mama's prayer. Hello, somebody. You know, some of us have done some naughty sins. Hello, somebody. If God is to uncover our sins, everybody will be running away from us. Oh, you're, you're quiet of me right now. You're quiet of me. So in spite of that, God continue to keep you going. You see, he drive them out to drive out before you nation greater and stronger than you. And to bring you in and give you their land as an inheritance as is now taking place. Hallelujah. Just because of tiredness, you, you miss the place of revelation. Hello? When the church is about to close, people tend to miss revelation. Because they're very tired. Look at what the Bible says. He said, God, do you want to drive? He brings them out to drive them out before you, you, before you nations. And great to drive out before you nations greater and stronger than you. This is what God will do next year. And to bring you in. God doesn't just take you out. He brings you in. And gives you their land as an inheritance as is not taking place. Are, you are already sensing grace. If you watch it, you will see you are already sensing grace. It may not have come to the fullness, but you are working in grace. God has, you know, you know, retrenched some people because of you. And all of a sudden, you've been looking for a job, applying, and there is no job. So they give you a call and say, oh, we have a good job. Can you come and, we have a sudden job. Come and see if you can take that job. You get there, you realize that somebody was fired yesterday. And maybe that person is a wicked person, and God is warning him or her to repent. And he, she, or the heart does, uh, uh, she or him doesn't want to repent. So God decided to sack him in order to position you. I want you, please, God's people, even you sitting here today, recognize the place of grace when you live here today say lord i thank you for everything you've done for you to be able to drive to work and go and get back home after all your day with an accident it's mercy and grace for your neighbors who want your position not to have poison you to take your position is the place of his grace some people who want your husband or your wife, for them not to have killed you, is because of the place of his grace. And you may be saying, well, nobody even want my husband. Hello, somebody. My husband and two go, so nobody will want him. Oh, you're not talking to me right now. I'm telling you, put your husband in the market today. 
you will see somebody that is coming after him. Am I thinking to somebody? You, you will see somebody say, that is the kind of man I am looking for. I've been praying for that kind of man. Hello, somebody. But for you, you're saying he ain't too good. Nobody will care about him. Just take him to Manuka Market. And you will know what I'm talking about. Oh, Mama Chapu is getting what I'm talking. Oh, I like, hello, somebody. Your husband is the best man that God has ever given to you. Hello? So those things that are matter to you, to some people, they are praying for it. Lord, if you can put me in that church. Lord, if you can give me that wife. A woman confessed in America with a man that they, she previously killed her husband to marry another man. The man conspired with her to kill the husband. Maybe that husband did not even know that the wife was important. But another man wanted the wife and killed him. Hello, somebody. So thank God. Man of God, thank God for your wife. You married the best wife on earth. I'm telling you right now. Thank God for your husband. Thank God for those children God has given to you. When you look at them, see them as prime minister of this nation. Jacinta Adam is still 38 years or 37. But she is the prime minister of this country today. If you see her in the street, maybe before she became a prime minister, she probably didn't look like. But grace has made her. And grace will make you. I said grace will make you. Grace will make you. Grace has made you in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout grace. Somebody shout grace. Somebody shout grace. Shouting is actually prophetic. Elevate. Somebody shout grace. Turn it to prayer. Grace has made me. Grace made my family. Grace made my marriage. Grace gave me that job. Grace gave me joy. It is because of grace. Can we turn it to prayer? Some of you are still sitting. Maybe I can continue preaching. I start again, somebody. Let's turn it to prayer. Grace. The Bible says, go back to that scripture. <coughs> Put me that scripture, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 7. He said, when you have completed this building, when you put the last door, when this year comes to an end, I want you to remember one thing. I want you to begin to cry, grace, grace, for seven. Grace, 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 grace. Can anybody try an alternative prayer? Begin to cry, grace. Lord, it is because of your grace, oh God. Your grace kept me. When you could have died because of your sin, but mercy and grace came looking for you. When you could have lost it two years ago, mercy and grace came, kept you. Grace, can somebody turn it to prayer? Now you have accomplished this year. Now this year has come to an end. Would you start capping it with grace? Would you start remember? Would you remember the place of grace? Would you cry, grace, grace? You need the grace. You need the grace. Lord, this is the day of grace. Declare it over your life. This is the day of grace. Oh Lord, my God, this is the hour of grace. This is the moment of grace. It is because of, of your grace that I'm still standing. Lord, it is your grace that came, my Goliath. It's not because of that little stone in my hand. It is the name of the law that takes Goliath out of military life. Yes, I thank you, Lord. Your grace has given me victory. Somebody cried a cry, prayed a prayer. Lord, your grace has given me victory. <laughs> Father, your grace has clothed me. Your grace clothed my family. In the last 10 years, Lord, I, have not, I don't have to bury anybody because of your grace. Somebody pray. Grace, Lord. Grace, Lord. Father, grace, Lord. The Lord, I recognize the place of your grace. Somebody cry. 
Say, Lord, I recognize the place of your grace. I don't take it lightly. I don't play with it. Yes, Lord, I walk in grace. Yes, Lord, I move in grace. Yes, Lord, it was your grace. Somebody cry out. Lord, I love you. Love you. Your grace made me. Your grace kept me. It was your grace. I'm not feeling that prayer. I believe heaven needs to feel your voice. The Bible says in Psalm 81 verse 10, say, open wide your mouth and I will feel it. I want to feel your mouth, but I want you to open it. Holy Spirit, feel our mouth. We cry grace, grace. Grace of the Lord, continue to follow us home. Grace of the Lord, continue to mold our life. Grace of the Lord, continue. Father, may your grace continue to flush that sin out of our system. That addition, your grace is against that addition. Addition, you wicked addition in our life, we break it. It is your grace. Lord, paya kata kata. Let your grace, Lord, flush out. Smoking addition. Alcoholic addition. Secret addition. Marijuana addition. We break the power in the name of Jesus. Somebody cry grace. Yes, it's your grace. Yes, it's your grace. Father, it's your grace. Yes, it's your grace. Father, it's your grace. Somebody cried. Somebody shouted. It is your grace, Lord. It is your grace, Lord. Yes, it is your grace, Lord. Is your grace, Lord. Somebody cry out. Shout his grace. Cry his grace. Pull his grace. More of his grace. The Bible says, and Jesus was full of grace and truth. Yes, Lord, we cry your grace. We cry your grace, oh Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. I cry your grace, oh Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Somebody cry your grace. Lord, up in the heavens, release the rain of grace. Somebody ask him for rain of grace. More grace, Lord. More grace to serve you. More grace to work for you. More grace to honor you. More grace to work in power. To work in glory. More grace, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, more grace. More grace, oh Lord. Lord, more grace. More grace, oh Lord. Lord, more grace. More grace, oh Lord. Yes, more grace. More grace, oh Lord. Lord, more grace. More grace, oh Lord. Lord, more grace. More grace, oh Lord. Lord, my grace, my grace, oh Lord. Somebody pull his grace, pull his grace. The Lord, even if you have not been visited this year, today God is visiting you. He's visiting your family. The shackles is broken. The manacles are removed. The escritor over you is washed away. The blood is speaking for you in the name of Jesus. Years of struggle and hardship is broken today. You will not enter into a new year in the same way you came. You will not enter in this new year the same way you came. You will not enter this new year, this coming new year, the same way you came today. The fire of His grace is on your life in the name of Jesus receive the fire receive his grace 
let the grace pursue his people let your grace pursue your people let your grace pursue your people father we position ourselves in the map of your grace lord i position myself in the opinion of your grace reign lord open your heaven and send the reign of grace lord open your heavens and send the reign of your grace in the name of jesus Hola, baba, shalaba. I want to pray for that sister. Bring, bring the sister. Our sister, yeah. Bring her. Hold up, baba. Women of God, both of you stand up. Women of God, stand up. Understand up. I want to pray for both of you. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I receive. Stand up. Stand up. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I receive the grace. You have ordained for me in the year 2017 and 2018. I receive a special grace now. I lay hold on the horn of the altar and I receive your grace. I release special flow. Whatever you've been believing God for is granted now. Everything you've been believing God for, pain is wiped away. Lies is wiped away. You love God and He has remembered you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I release what you've never had in your lifetime. A new dimension of glory and grace rest on you. In the name of Jesus. What is the problem? Just give me a few minutes, I'll be done. She has been sick. She couldn't sleep well. She couldn't sleep. Yeah, she has anxiety attacks and uh, All right. Is there anybody here that is sick? If you're sick, I want to use the one pray for you. If you're sick, just come up with me. All right. Everybody stretch your hand on her. This is a young lady. She ought not to be tormented. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you love him? See, it is not the will of the Lord for you to be tormented for you to be losing your sleep. God loves you and he wants to visit you. If you believe and confess him today, go back home and you will have one of the best you've ever had before. Now, if God hears you today, would you serve him? Would you serve him? You want? Now, today, God will heal you. Today will be the end of this sickness, okay? Now, but keep your promise. After tonight, you will sleep very well. She has not been sleeping since two weeks. We went to pray for the lady. The lady been, have, was not sleeping. And when we got there, she said she would not sleep for days. I asked her, do you want to sleep? She said, yes. I said, now nah, receive sleep. You were there with me. While I was sleep, sleep, praying, she slept off. And we were trying to wake her. She didn't. We walked away and left. She didn't know when we left. She just slept. The power of God came on her. So God will do the same thing for you, okay? Right now, I want to say, dear Lord Jesus, if I stretch your hand and pray for this here. You are you, you're a Hindu. You're a Hindu. But Jesus loves you, okay? Jesus loves you. He is the true living God. God wants us to worship the true God. The only person that will serve you is Jesus. A lot of, a lot of them people worship, and they, they're thinking, they are very honest. They think it's God. But sometimes they are worshiping a man-made God. But I'm telling you, for you to know that Jesus is alive, I pray for you now, and you will be okay. And next Sunday, please come back. Okay? 
right now. If we pray for her, let her encounter the true Jesus, the true Lord. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, today I come to you with my heart, my soul. I give it to you. I renounce all that goes. I recognize you with my heart as the only true God. Right now, come into my heart. Heal me. I promise I will serve you as you heal me. In Jesus' name. Amen. I say one more to say, I renounce every God of my fathers. Whatever my fathers worship that is tormenting me. I renounce it. Every covenant that was entered for me by my father, mother, or great-grandfathers, I renounce those covenants right now. I shut the mouth of hell. I will not die. I will live. Repeat after me. I will live and declare the goodness of God. Amen. Okay, lift, close your eyes. Everybody pray. I ask every demon, anxiety, over your life, give me oil, over your life, today is cancer. Every case that was placed on you from your lineage or by anybody alive is now cancer. In the name of Jesus, everything that was stolen your sleep, we now as a church, we restore your sleep from today you will sleep like a baby like you've never done before we command every demonic presence that is tormenting you to pack its load now in the name of Jesus loose now we lose you from chains of destruction we lose you from chains of death we lose you from chains of failure every chain in your life break in the name of Jesus break, break, break now now, every chain in your life, demonic chain, wicked chain, catch fire. Just close your eyes and continue. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Now, I speak peace over your life. I command your sleep to come back. I command your mind to come together. In the name of Jesus, I command your thought to come together. I rebuke depression. In the name of Jesus, you demon of depression, I rebuke you. Every demonic presence in your hands, I silence them. As you go today, you are going with the presence of God. Receive that fire. In the name of Jesus, receive fire. Open up your body. Let the fire of God touch you. So anoint you right now. This oil is used to be a natural oil. Become super, supernatural substance. Come upon you. Come upon you. Come upon you. Everything that have rushed in your life will lubricate it now. In the name of Jesus. I command your eyes to receive sleep. Life has returned. Peace return. Joy return. In Jesus' name. And let it just shout. Amen. Sister, congratulations. What is your name? How are you feeling? You were feeling tired when you came. So how are you feeling right now? Now, can you feel any difference? Just tell us if you don't feel no problem. If you feel, can you feel any difference? You can't feel any difference. Okay, but you were feeling tired when you came. Are you still tired now? You're not tired. That is the difference. Tell us somebody. That's the difference. 
So you were feeling like dizzy when you came. So you can't feel it right now. Is there anything he could not do before when he came here? He just, you can't sleep? All right. But tonight, you will have a good sleep, okay? You will have a good sleep. Let us know tomorrow because tonight you will sleep like never before. Yeah. I come to this Sunday. Don't struggle to come. Your mom, I'm sure, woke her this morning to bring you here. And I prayed for you that God will, you no, know, I pray that God will touch your heart to recognize that something has happened to you, okay? So go back and sleep. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your time. We are about to close for today. I want to thank you for your time. We know it's a bit um, been wedding thing. I, we thank everybody that he, here. We welcome all of you, those of you that are coming for the church. My brother, you're welcome. Good to see you. It's like my first time seeing you here. God bless you. Thank you for coming. We welcome you with our sister. God bless you. Amen. Look at somebody and greet them. Tell them how much you love them before we share the grace. Say to your neighbor, just to let you know that I love you. I love you just the way you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just love the way somebody greeted the husband. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have, you know, it's good we share the grace with joy and clapping of joy and rejoicing. Brother Zime, you're one of the most blessed men this year. God bless you, brother. You did well. You worked so hard. Hallelujah.